Bad love with pets, two cents. Have you heard the expression, God helps those who help themselves? It's not from the Bible. And sometimes man's wisdom can get you in a whole lot of trouble. Listen to this. If you're not acknowledging God in all your ways so he can direct your path, guess what will happen? You will wreak havoc thinking that you have to help yourself. When the Bible says in Psalms 121, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Well, my help cometh from the Lord. Now, if you do that, then you're in good shape. But many of you are not looking to God. You're looking in the mirror at me, myself, and I. And I'll handle this. I got this. No, you don't got this. You're getting ready to make a real mess out of what you do have. So there are times when you're in a situation, you know how they ever say, I've heard this expression too, it's a street expression. <laughs> Don't write no check, you're behind, you're behind can't, can't cash. cash. Well, many of us do that with our mouths. We start lipping off. And what might have turned in our favor completely builds a wall, of a, a, just a complete wall, a barrier. Because our own mouths have done the damage. And we feel uh, vindicated because we told them all. And you had nothing but words. They had the authority. You didn't consult with the authority above. You didn't consult with God. Fold your hands, shut your mouth, back off, and let him handle it. No, you had to get your finger in the till and mess things up, souring the whole situation. Don't do that. Don't allow your flesh to flare up like that. Don't give place to the devil. Because what you end up doing is playing into their hands. You're doing what they expected you to do. So, oh. You really think I'm going to help them now? See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. That's their attitude. Now, they may have the same attitude, but you're consulting with the power that is above all powers, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You're consulting with him. You're crying out to him. You fold your arms and shut your mouth and watch and see what he does. And all that you cannot do, and all that you cannot come up with, all, all the areas where you fall short, it will amaze you if you just give him a chance. It will amaze you to see him change the hearts of people that have nothing but contempt for you in the first place. And somebody gets in their ear, something happens in their life that opens their eyes. Or a fear of God starts to come over. Something happens. Or maybe they're backed up in the corner and they have no other choice but to bless you. No matter how much they hate it, they have to. Legally bound to do it. Don't give them an out by showing you're behind. Don't do that. Don't give them any excuse. Don't give them the bullets. Don't put the bullets in their hand. Because when you act a fool, that's exactly what you're doing. You're giving them power over you. You think you're usurping your power by cussing them out and telling them where to go and how no good and low down they are. You're not doing anything but giving them bullets to aim at you. Keep your mouth shut. Take your complaints, your tears, your fears, your frustrations to God. And ask him to handle it for you, his way. And you stay out of it. And watch and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Then you'll know it wasn't by your might. It wasn't by your power. But by his spirit. <laughs> God bless you as you learn to trust. Someone higher and other than yourself. Trust God. Here are three examples that the Lord just popped in my head 
I love the way the Holy Spirit quickens your memory. Three examples of trust in God, sitting yourself down, being still, and seeing the salvation of the Lord. Listen, when you keep your little messy self out of it, God can create beauty out of chaos, but you can create a mess out of what could have been beautiful. Hmm, think about that. Now listen to this. Three things that happened in my life that I got to see. Number one, I went through that bitterness and anguish of spirit and frustration and all of that, being so upset because of the foreclosure crisis that we went through with the real estate market. You know that story. Now, the one thing that I kept complaining to God about, and that's why the best place to take your complaints and your tears and your fears, the best place is to God. I sat in my car for two hours going down my list. I had a litany of things I had to take to the Lord. We had issues. I had to have a powwow. So what? One of, some of the things I told him was, you know, Lord, when it comes to the rich, when it comes to people who come from other countries and they have a lot of rich family and they have money and they can get loans from this country that we can't touch with a 10-foot pole and all these other people that get favored while we get kicked in the butt. What I'm asking you is, why is it we don't have the connections? I don't have the connections. Now, every time I put a an offer into or onto a piece of property, I put an offer in, and somebody with money, cash in hand, who has the connections that tell them ahead of time that something's coming up, they jump the gun and they're able to get in past your little offer and they put the money in hand and it's theirs. I said, Lord, I don't have any connections. That's me taking it to the Lord. I'm talking in the natural. I'm not talking about the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord about the natural. So my natural circumstance was I knew nobody who could pull my coattail and say, girl, there's a house real cheap in such and such a city on such and such a street. Get it now. There's a, a thing just got on the market two hours ago. Uh, there's a real good deal. Uh, I mean, nothing. I didn't have anybody to do that for me. So every time we put an offer in, whoop, is ripped right out from under us. Cash. Before the owner got to see my offer. Hmm. So you can imagine how angry I was getting. Psalms 37, fret not thyself because of evildoers who prosper in the way. I mean, that's how I was feeling. I was fretting. And I was thinking of all of them as evil too. Oh yeah, I was mad. So listen, what did I do? I took it to God. What did God do? It was about a week before Christmas. I got so disgusted of seeing everything we wanted snatched out from under us by folks with means that we never came close to having. And what happened? God tells me one day after my computer had been off for four days, I was just done. I was, I said, Lord, I'm not looking anymore. If, if you don't tell me I'm done, I'm just done. I'm tired. I'll look after Christmas because there's nothing moving. I'm, I was just, I was disgusted. So I didn't lose my faith in God. I was just frustrated with that whole situation. But I took that to God. So I just calm my little happy hips down. And my husband and I would just watch TV. And we pray about the situation and we watch TV and we go to church and we do what we normally did and forgot about it for about four or five days. And one night, one Friday night, two days before Christmas, I hear a voice speak to me. It was my God, the God that I trust, that I poured my heart out to. And I poured my complaints out too, and whose shoulder I cried on while I boohooed all of my anger. Now, he tells me quietly with a still small voice, turn on your computer, I got something for you. 
Now, from that moment on, and I started looking, and the Lord showed me this house I live in now, that it dropped by $10,000, and we offered $6,000 less than that. $1,600 discount. Boom, just like that. And got it. Now, here's my point. I could have got frustrated and just said, forget it. We could have been calling up all kind of relatives. Can we stay with you? We're getting ready to lose the house, da, da, da. And just hit the panic button and had a hissy fit. And through my anger, made emotional decisions that had nothing to do with what God wanted for us. Because I'm leaning to my own understanding and my fears. No, God spoke to me. He was my connection. All the connection that I didn't have. God said, I'll be your connection. Boop, boop, yank, yank, pull my coattail. I got something for you. Turn on your computer. I bet you that house hadn't been on the market an hour. Not on the market. It had been on the market for two years. But I bet you that price drop happened within the hour of God telling me. Because he made sure I was the first to know. And guess what? Nobody else put a bid in. Nobody. He kept everybody else from even noticing it. It was Christmas. And he pulled my coattail when it dropped at the lowest it was ever going to be. And we're blessed. So my point is that was a blessing because I did not lean to my own understanding. I let go. I let God... And in all my frustration, I still trusted him. Now, here's another one. I was riding down the street with a friend of mine. I had no idea this guy had a $4,000 warrant out for his arrest for skipping probation. No, what is it? Uh, parole. Skipping parole. And I don't know all the terms, but skipping parole and crossing state lines doing it. Mm. So I don't know this. I have no idea. And I'm in the passenger seat just checking out the scenery while he's doing the driving. It's raining. It's just drizzling a little bit. Nothing heavy. And the cops pull us over. Now the cops pull us over and he tells me real quick what his situation is. And I said, you relax. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. You see what God does. And I said, don't say anything. Don't do anything to get him upset. Just, just cooperate. I'm going to pray. I'm going to try to pray you out of this. And while they were telling him, get out the car, they put handcuffs on him, put him in the back seat of the police car. And I'm saying, oh God, oh God, have mercy. Show this man how mindful you are of him. Lord, don't let them arrest him. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord. No lip, no cussing out the police officer, no rolling my eyes with attitude. No, I directed all my attention on God. He will keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on him. And I kept everything on him. What ended up happening? The police, they do the check. They tell him, you have a $4,000 warrant out for your arrest. I'm standing out there with him, but I'm praying. I'm praying. You know what the police said? You know what? This is your lucky day. It's raining. We're tired. We're going to let you go, but you better be careful. If you, do you have a driver's license? I said, yes, here it is. <laughs> he said, okay, you do all the driving. I don't want to catch you again or else you're going in. They let, they took the handcuffs off a of brother man, escorted him to the passenger side. I got in the driver's side and we took off by God's grace. Now, you know that stuff doesn't happen. Hmm. Not by our might, not by our spirit. I, I mean, but, but by our might or by our power, but by God's spirit. He says that not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And that's something. Now, here's number three. <laughs> it's something how 
when God intervenes, you can take your hands off of it and enjoy the ride and just marvel as to the way God can do things. Now I'm talking like this because I'm stalling. Because Grandma just lost number three. So if it doesn't come to me, you'll have to be satisfied with those two stories for right now. But I just want to say to you, when God does it, if you take your hands off and yield it to God, he can do things you can never get done in your wildest dreams. He can do it. He did. Okay, here's number three. Wasn't the original one, but number three works. All right. When I dated my husband, I was already, after dating him one month, I was ready to marry him. I was committed from my soul. I was committed to him. And I asked the Lord to make it happen. And I asked him, I said, Lord, is this, is this something you can do? I mean, are you interested in getting us together? Or, you know, is, is this just a pipe dream on my side? And the Lord popped a song in my head. I hadn't heard that song in years. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for him? He is God, the mighty one, speaks the word and it gets done. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right, years go by. And then the Lord lays on my heart. Okay, now we've been around this mountain long enough. Break up with brother man for my sake. Break up with him. Cut him loose. Okay, okay Lord. Okay, Lord. So I had to talk with him. We had a powwow. I told him, God said, we need to break up. He said, all right. He didn't like it. I didn't like it, but we both said, all right. He said, it's probably best. I said, yeah, it probably is because it was getting out of hand. So I cut him loose. He cut me loose. We parted peacefully. I was still in love with him. He took a piece of my heart with him. But anyway, and what happened? 11, 10 or 11 months later, right? He called me up with a marriage proposal. And that was the sign I put before God. If he ever dials my number again, let it be with a marriage proposal. Then I know that you ordained him. Other than that, mm -mm. no, I will just click. So, and this is something else that God did that was really phenomenal. As in love with that man as I was, God made it so easy for me not to even miss him. Only God can do that. I was living my life happy-go-lucky. I was going to my inner healing meetings. I was getting all kind of healing from God. God was doing a work in me. Mm -hmm. And whatever he was doing with Milton, between him and Milton. But he's working on me. I was minding my own business. I didn't have time to worry about him. I had enough of my own to deal with. And what ended up happening? The phone rings. And here, Milton with a marriage proposal. I think we need to pray about getting married. I'm like, oh, really now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I was settled in my heart, for God's sake, because I ain't going to miss out on God for no man. I don't care how much I think I love him. No, ain't nobody worth me missing out on God. And I showed God, he was my God. I was not going to put no man on a pedestal. Not, not intentionally, no way. So what happened? He started introducing me to everybody in his family and everybody in the church knew. He announced he had a talk with the pastor. We started marriage counseling. And we announced that we were engaged to be married on such and such a date. And we were married happily for 15 years till the Lord called him home. I had a phenomenal man, y'all. Now, I 
could have tried to manipulate that all I wanted. We would have had a mess. Probably would have gotten divorced in the mix. Mm -hmm. Or probably never would have gotten married. But I took my hands off of this completely. And I let God handle it his way. Even if I didn't like his decision, that's how much I trusted God. I trusted God to never see that man again, if need be. I was all right with it. How much do you trust God? How far are you willing to go with him? With your hands off the steering wheel. You trust him to steer that car for you? Hmm. Yeah. Trust God. He's due to trust. As the old folks say, he's due to trust. Trust him. He's worthy. God bless you.